okay so in this class we will discuss about the pointing theorem and the pointing vector this is the conclusive part of this electromagnetic fields and uh, here we will first discuss about the pointing theorem and we will prove the theorem also and in between we will also discuss the concept of pointing vector also in sometimes in your exam they ask for the pointing theorem as well as pointing vector together so pointing don't miss out this pointing vector because this pointing vector also this ask in exams right so let us start our discussion related to the pointing theorem so pointing theorem basically it states let us write the theorem first it states the theorem it states that the cross product of electric field vector E capital E and magnetic field vector H denoted by capital H at any point at any point is the measure of the rate of flow of electromagnetic energy this em is electromagnetic electromagnetic energy per unit area area at that point so this is the theorem so in mathematical terms that we can write that is p is equals to e cross a that is e and cross product of e and h where e is the magnetic field vector uh, electric field vector and h is the magnetic field vector and p let us write it p is the pointing p is known as pointing vector this is known as pointing vector you have to remember that pointing vector this term is actually denoted i mean given uh, by from its discoverer actually the person who discovered it which is point pointing he had discovered it so you have to remember one thing the direction the direction let us write it the direction of this p that is the pointing vector is perpendicular to e and h in the direction of direction of vector e cross h so this is that means you if somebody ask you to define the pointing vector so pointing vector is given by this p is equals to e cross h where it's a cross product of e and h and you have to remember that the direction of p is perpendicular to e and h in the direction of vector e h that if you can see that if this e cross h are perpendicular to each other it will be like this or in other in the reverse direction so that means both from e and h this will be perpendicular place perpendicular to e both e and h so this is about uh, pointing theorem so next we will prove we will discuss the proof of this pointing theorem right now oh, to start the proof of this pointing theorem we will start with maxwell fourth equation that is a modified uh, ampere circuit law so we will start so we will start from here we are considering the maxwell fourth equation so we will considering maxwell fourth equation that is ampere circuit law or rather actually uh, this will be modified ampere circuit law so we will start from here it states as we know that this is del cross e will be equals to j plus epsilon del e del t right so from this equation we can write in terms of j we can write this as therefore we can write this j will be equals to del cross h minus epsilon del e del t right so now that this equation has a dimension of the current density as we already discussed this equation has a dimension of current density 
Now to convert the dimension into rate of energy flow per unit volume, what we need to do? We need to take the dot product of both sides of the equation by E. So we will take the dot product of both sides of the equation by E. So, so taking dot product of both sides by E both sides of this equation by E so what we will obtain we will obtain as E dot J will be equal to E dot del cross H minus epsilon E del E del T right so let us name this equation as our equation number one right so now we will use certain vector identity so using vector identity using vector identity so we will use this vector identity and we will put this expression in our equation so let us uh, discuss the vector identity which we will use the vector identity which we will use is del dot e cross h will be equals to h dot del cross e minus e dot del cross h so this you can obtain from the properties of the vectors you can easily have this you can we have already discussed this is the property of the vector identity that we have previously discussed also so from here we can write we will write in terms of e and del h so we will write uh, so in terms of e we will write so what we will do from here we can write that e dot del cross h del cross h that means this term i am taking here so del cross h this will be equals to h dot del cross e minus del dot e cross h right so now we will be have this vector identity this this term so we will put this value of this e cross del cross c here this part so we will put this value here we will, so what we get so by substituting this value we get so by substituting this uh, in one in equation one what we get we get e dot j is equals to h dot del cross e minus del dot e cross h minus epsilon e del e del t right so let us name that this is our equation number Two, right so now up to this is fine we have found equation number one and two so now we will discuss we will go to the Maxwell third equation where which is actually the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction so let us now uh, let us write it from again so we will I'm just making some space you can move back and see the expression again so now now from Maxwell third equation that is that is our Faraday's law which we already discussed so from here we can write that this del cross E will be equals to minus mu del H del T okay so this was from Faraday's laws we have obtained this now we will substitute this value del cross e in equation number two which we have got previously so we will simply substitute so now substituting value of del cross e del cross uh, e in equation number two which we previously got so we will have e dot j will be equals to minus mu h dot del h del t minus epsilon e dot del e del t minus del dot e cross h so this is our let us name this as our equation number three right so now we can write now we can write this h dot dh dt 
this will be equal to 1 by 2 dh square dt or dh, uh, dh dt square so let us name this as our equation number 4a and also e dot d del e del t this will be equals to 1 by 2 del e del t square let us name as this equation number uh, 4b right now we will substitute this value of equation 4a and 4b in our original in equation number 3 here right so by substituting equation 4a and 4b in 3 here right so what we will obtain we will obtain e dot j will be equals to minus of mu by 2 dh dt square minus epsilon by 2 d del e del t square minus del dot e cross h so this we have obtained right so or from here we can write or we can write this as equals to e dot j will j will be equals to minus d del del t you can take common mu h square by 2 plus eps plus epsilon e square by 2 right minus del dot e cross h so we can write this now by taking integral on both sides so let us now take integral on both sides so by taking integral on both sides but we obtain so by taking integral of both sides we will obtain integral or volume integral actually so this is e dot j dv is equals to minus del del t integral of volume integral of this mu h square by 2 plus epsilon e square by 2 dv minus volume integral of del dot e cross h dv right so let us name this equation number 5 so we have obtained up to equation 5 now we will apply gauss divergence theorem to the second term of the right hand side right so let us see that i am omitting it again this proof is uh, important very important you follow this pointing theorem and pointing vector properly so now we will apply by now applying gauss divergence theorem to second term that is the last term which has came second term of right hand side right why this is so this is because to change volume integral to surface integral this is the purpose of using uh, gloss divergence theorem that i have told repeatedly in my previous videos so so now by applying this what we will have we will have that volume integral of del dot e cross h dv that will be equals to closed surface integral of e cross h ds right so this uh, uh, now we will substitute this in equation number 5 which i have previously got so simply substitute this equation so we will write substitute this in equation number 5 that we previously obtained so what we will have by obtain by putting substituting in this uh, gauss divergence theorem so we will have e dot j e dot j dv one minute so e dot j dv that will be equals to minus del del t volume integral of epsilon e by 2 square plus mu h 
by 2 square dv minus so closed surface integral of e cross h here this term this was the second term that we applied you see gauss divergence theorem in the second term so second term was this one so here we will apply this one so del cross e to cross h ds and also or we can finally write that closed surface integral of e cross h ds will be equals to volume integral of minus del del t epsilon e by 2 square plus mu h by 2 square dv minus e dot j dv now this was this is the proof so now this is the expression that we got the proof of this pointing theorem right now we have to remember that that left hand side of the term this left hand side of the term it represent the rate of out of outward flow of energy from any volume so let us just for the sake i am writing it out this part represents rate of outward flow of energy energy means be it electric energy or magnetic energy from a volume right so this part is represents the rate of outward flow of energy from any volume and the second part this part this will be this is actually the rate of decrease in energy stored in the electric and magnetic field that means if some part of the outward flow of energy is going out of the volume so certainly there will be some decrease in the energy inside the volume so this part this particular this part not this one this one only so this represents the rate of decrease in energy stored in electric and magnetic fields right and this one is the ohmic power which is dissipated right so this three terms one is this one this term this one is the rate of flow of outward flow of energy from any volume this is the decrement or the decrease of energy stored and this one is the ohmic power loss so this is the proof of the pointing theorem so if you are being asked to write the write and explain the pointing theorem and proof so you will have to write up to this will be fine right